so I'm still shaking um, but I've had my eviction notice and knowing that my baby's literally going to be a month old and we've got nowhere to go. I went out to the door to see if um, I'd had a delivery but instead of having <laughs> the delivery I had this letter. So this basically means that the bailiffs are going to come to the house. I'll have like an hour to collect my belongings and then I'll have to take that to the council. I've banged my head against the brick wall for months, um, trying to get help because I didn't want to be in this position with a newborn baby. Um, but here I am with a newborn baby about to have a, a month old and going to the council. It's not only being on maternity leave that has Dawn struggling to afford a new place. My mum passed away last November. I had to find £3,500 um, to pay for a funeral. My mum was bipolar and she also was an alcoholic. So when things were bad, it was almost like it was a very chaotic ha household, so we moved houses loads. My mum had loads of different jobs, different friends, different... There was always change in our life. Um, and again, another reason why I'm so, like, like, praying that I don't have to move my son's school. And it's not because I'm trying to be funny and it's not because I'm trying to be a pain in the bum. I'm just trying to keep structure and I don't want to change things for him that I don't have to. The bailiffs will be evicting Dawn in just eight days. But in the meantime, she's been busy trying to bid for a more permanent council house. Dawn needs a minimum of two beds and the house needs to be dog friendly. I am not moving anywhere without my dog. That is like saying getting rid of a child. And I think it's a human right for us to be able to have something like a pet if we want to. So there is a house. Uh, it's quite far away though but I'm only position 15, so I wouldn't get that. There's another house, I'm position 212. I'm number four on this, it's a high-rise flat, uh, which is floor 10, which is also no dogs allowed, and it's in Cradley Heath, which is so far away. And then the last house on there, I'm a position 175. Everything's so vague and so unknown, like you really, really don't know. You don't know whether you're coming or going, it's so annoying. It's crazy. I've got to get so much done, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to be put in a one-bed flat, um, which I've got to share a bedroom now with my two children, which is half an hour away from my son's school. Oh, God. So I've got to get a newborn baby ready and my son ready for school and drive, like, half an hour every day. I just don't know how that's going to be realistic. Um, I'm going to have to sort her out. Even worse for Dawn is what happens to her beloved dog, Rhythm. Obviously, she won't be able to come with you, won't she? No, she's not allowed to go to the temporary accommodation. Um, yeah, my friend's looking after her for me. I couldn't put her in, like, a, you know, like a boarding home or anything like that. She's too used to being with me. She's nine now, you know, she's old. Yeah. Yeah. You're an old girl, aren't you? Yeah. She's not going to understand what's going on, is she? She's just going to be like, oh, my God, my mum's abandoned me. And I don't know how long that's going to be for. With her three-week-old baby in tow, she's on her way to view the temporary accommodation the local council has assigned her. It could be anything from a flat in a high-rise to a single room in a B&B &B or hotel. The only choice Dawn gets is between whatever she's offered and homelessness. So we've got a little bathroom, which has only got a shower. However, at least I've got my own bathroom. So that's a bonus, I guess. I'm trying to see the positives here. This is a pull-out bed, apparently, but I'm not sure how it... Oh, oh God, it's really heavy. I can't do it. Fuck sake. That's really annoying. How am I going to do that every night? I'm not going to be able to. How the hell does this work? Oh. Look how dirty that is. Oh, my God, that is actually disgusting. It should have been cleaned. It's got tobacco and everything on it. It's fucking vile. Shut 
just not right. The accommodation is pretty well kitted out, but for Dawn, who has always worked and never depended on the council for housing before, this is a real adjustment. People are like, oh, just get private rent. Oh, stop telling me to get private rent. Sorry. I can't get on the private, I can't get a private rent. I can't afford it while I'm on maternity leave. And it's just unrealistic and I'd end up putting myself in debt or I'd end up messing the landlord around and not being out of pay and stuff and that's not fair. So I'm doing what is like the sensible thing but it's just frustrating that I'm now in a little one bed flat because I'm not able to get the private sector. It's just so frustrating. I was saying as well, like, it's good that it's got, like, a secure door and the CCTV. Like, I do try and think about the positives, but it's just not home, is it? Like, I'd like to be able to go somewhere to make it home, and I don't know how long I'm going to be here for, and I don't know how long that that's still going to be reality for me. And that's what's upsetting, really. I'm just going from one unknown situation to another, really. Sorry. <laughs> The nightmare scenario will be if Dawn refuses to leave the property, then the bailiffs will have to carry out the eviction forcefully. Four miles away, Dawn is in a cafe. She spent the night in temporary accommodation. The bailiffs are going to be at my door, uh, changing the locks as far as I'm aware. They go to the house, check that each room, make sure that you've got rid of your belongings and, you know, all of that stuff. I'm definitely relieved because I don't think I would have enjoyed having to see the bailiffs, although they could have been really lovely people, you know, they... I'm just assuming here that they would have been like, get out. <laughs> um, so rather than having to experience something like that, which I've never experienced before, I, I'm glad that I didn't have to. Thank you very much. Take care. Keys inside, yeah? Keys just the door just there. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Now, Ansar and the landlord's cousin need to give the house a once-over. We look like the bad guys, don't we? We're here to kick a family out, so, as you can imagine, it's not very good. Until the government finds a solution, it's going to keep happening up and down the country. It's the same everywhere at the moment. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest. I think the whole system is completely flawed. Obviously, there needs to be a process that is fair for everyone, but I don't feel like this process is fair for anybody me experiencing this eviction, I'm now more aware of how bad things are. Because um, it's put, it's shone a massive light on the fact that, you know, there isn't enough houses and there isn't enough help out there. And there isn't enough advice either. Uh. <laughs> Come on, mate, let's go. End goal is having a nice home and making it lovely for the children and having, you know, a settled life and not waiting for a landlord to give me a Section 21. But yeah, in the short period, I think I'm going to be a little bit apprehensive and a little bit anxious until that happens, really. After she'd been in temporary accommodation for six weeks, Dawn was offered a two-bedroom flat by the council. But by then, she'd had a massive rethink about her future, inspired by a recent trip to Wales. So I moved to Pembrokeshire when I was about 15. Um, I went to school in Pembrokeshire. Uh, my mum stayed in Pembrokeshire, that's where my mum uh, passed away. Obviously, when my mum was alive, I'd stay with my mum. But then, obviously, since she's passed, I've had to, like, find other means of being able to go home. And that was actually really hard at first, going home and not having your home anymore. It was really hard. Sorry. So, Dawn has made a huge decision. I'd thought about a few times about going back to Pembrokeshire. I decided to call them and ask what my options were. Um, so yeah, I went online and I filled in an online form to start the ball rolling for, you know, the, the bidding essentially. And on the online form as well, I was allowed to put my dog, uh, which I was just thrilled about. 